Hello, good morning to everybody. This is uh, Dr. D. Suresh Babu, Assistant Professor in Computer Science from Kakatiya Government College, Hanamkonda. Today, I am here to explain you one of the important concepts in uh, C++ that is uh, constructors. In our uh, daily life, uh, we might have heard about this word many number of times. Constructor, actually it means, uh, I mean which constructs something. So, in a regular, in, a, in our regular lives, if this word can, if this word can be understood very easily, but if it is uh, taken into programming languages, what concept exactly constructs what? Is there any word like construction which takes place in programming languages? So, to answer all these questions, C++ provides us uh, many number of uh, concepts in the form of uh, constructors. The very beginning of my presentation starts with, a, starts with an image. There you can find two people uh, who are trying to construct something. So, now exactly I take this word construction uh, and I try to link uh, with the concepts of uh, C++. So, uh, today in this session, uh, I would like to focus my concentration on uh, definition of constructor, why constructor, what is the structure of a constructor, what are all the types that are there with constructors, then uh, comes to constructor overloading, then the last most important uh, concept, constructor versus memory management. So, when you take uh, object oriented uh, programming languages, uh, we have two important concepts. One of them is class, other one is uh, object. So, at this stage, uh, I do not want to touch class and objects, but uh, when you look at a class, class is a combination of uh, variables and functions. As they are participating in the class, we call them as member variables and member functions. But when you take out a word functions, uh, it is a word which play an important role both in uh, C language as well as in C++. Function is nothing but a self-contained block of statements which are meant for some purpose. The same concept may be used with uh, C++ also, but so in the same way, if you apply that function concept uh, with a class, it is called as a member function. The, the reason why I am uh, mentioning about functions, you know, there is a clear linkage between uh, function as well as a constructor. So, our first basic uh, discussion starts with the linkage of function with the constructor. Now, let me explain you uh, what is actually meant by a constructor, what is its purpose, what is the relation between a function and constructor. So, a function in a class definitely called as a member function. Now, let us uh, consider the function uh, in terms of constructor. When you look at uh, the fundamental definition of a constructor, it speaks like this. Constructor is a special member function whose task is to initialize the objects of its class. I call it as a special member function. There are many reasons why we call it as a special member functions. If you look at the reasons why it is so special, it is special because its name is same name as that of a class name. When you take an, when you take normal function, function is meant for solving a particular purpose. But when you take the function in terms of a constructor, it is called as special because it occupies or else it takes the same name as that of a class name. So, the first property that is associated with a constructor is its name is same as that of a class name. And uh, whenever a constructor is invoked, objects, uh, whenever the constructor is invoked, an object of its associated class is definitely created. And we may get one doubt why it is called uh, with a word constructor. There is a reason for it. It is called constructor because it constructs the values of data members of the class. We already, I have already told you there are certain variables which take, which participate in a class. They may be called as data members. So, it is, it is called as a constructor because it constructs the values of data members of a class. So, here we have observed two points. One of them is it is special because it takes the same name as a class name and the second one is it is called as a constructor because it constructs the values of data members of the class. Uh, when you go to uh, some of the characteristics or else when you want to look at the 
the specialized characteristics of the constructors they may be like this. Uh, we, in, in C++ we have three types of access specifiers. They may be public, private, protected. If something is declared under public, it can be directly accessed by object of the same class. But if something is declared under private or protected label, the object of the same class cannot able to directly access them. So, in this way the access specifiers provide uh, some kind of access permission for an object which is uh, very much uh, participating in a class. So, uh, the first most characteristic of a constructor is the character the constructor should be declared in public section. It should not be declared with private or else with the protected definitely it must be declared with only in public section and it is invoked automatically when the objects are created. So, there is a clear linkage between the objects and constructor. Before introducing the constructor, we used to give lot of importance to object, but once the constructor is introduced, the object go back and we always uh, observe the program and we always observe the concepts of a class only in terms of uh, constructor and indirectly constructor will definitely have a link with objects. Therefore, we say that uh, the constructor is invoked automatically when the objects are created. And uh, the third most point uh, which specifies about a uh, uh, important uh, characteristic of constructor is they do not have written types not even void and they cannot uh, uh, written values. Uh, there is a special uh, property associated with C++ you know. Whenever you use a, a, a function uh, in C++, the C++ compiler always expects a written type for a function. As we are calling the constructor as a special member function definitely the constructor will expect a written type, but as far as constructor is concerned you do not have any written type. It cannot possess any written type for that means it even it cannot uh, enjoy the void written or void type which returns the null value. Void is also not accepted and uh, hence we call hence we say constructors do not return any value. They do not have any written type not even void is accepted and they cannot return any value. So, they must be, so the first most property is they must be declared in the public section, they are invoked automatically when the objects are created and the last most and the next most one is they do not have written type, they cannot return any values and uh, they cannot be inherited. Uh, this can be observed from the uh, important uh, uh, feature of object oriented uh, programming language called as inheritance they cannot be inherited though a derived class can call the base class constructor, but uh, frankly speaking they cannot be uh, inherited. And the next one is uh, like uh, any other uh, C++ functions constructor can have default arguments. So, in the latter, in the latter uh, part of this uh, session I would like to talk about uh, the arguments as well as uh, uh, default arguments, parameters and so many things. But, uh, at this point of time I say, I say a point, C++ constructor can have default arguments. A constructor without any argument is always referred as default constructor. Then the constructors cannot be virtual. I mean uh, there is a feature called as polymorphism in object oriented programming languages uh, which can be divided into overloading and overriding and uh, we will take a part called as overloading in uh, next part, but uh, there is a concept called as overriding where constructors do not support. So, hence we say constructors cannot be virtual and uh, next one is C++ permits to use more than one constructor in a single class. Just like uh, uh, in a particular program you can use any number of functions same is the case with constructor also. C++ definitely permits us to use uh, more than one constructor in a class for uh, different purposes. Then uh, if you would like to observe the syntax of a constructor. Uh, this is this gives us a clear idea, this slide gives us a clear idea. Uh, each and every class definitely will have a class name, then uh, it will be opened with opening braces followed by access specifier uh, which may be public, private or else uh, protected. Generally protected is a access specifier uh, which will be definitely used with only inheritance as much as possible. Uh, we try to use only two access specifiers, one of them is public, other one is private. If something like access specifier is not specified, the compiler directly understands that this will come under a part called as private. So, access specifier means it may be public or else private and in a class 
uh, we definitely find uh, certain variables which may be called as member variables and we may find certain functions which may be called as member functions. As I told you, constructor is a part which need to be declared under public section. Here is one. Constructor have the same name as that of a class name and which will be declared under uh, uh, public sector. So, each and every constructor will have certain code, it may be called as constructor code and which involves constructor, uh, in constructor a uh, many number of variables will also take part. This is the original uh, syntax of a constructor which, uh, which resembles with uh, actual uh, definition of a normal function, normal function. Then uh, as far as C++ is concerned, uh, we have a chance to declare a function uh, uh, either in inside the class or else outside the class. As I told you, constructor resembles with uh, uh, the structure of a function. Uh, with regards to constructor also, there is a chance for a programmer uh, to define it uh, inside the pro inside a class or outside the class. If it is inside, if it is declared inside the class, uh, we need not bother because uh, the, it follows the formal structure where uh, if you observe this slide, uh, you can understand how a constructor may be defined inside the class. Here uh, the class name is A, I take a, a member variable called as num uh, which is of the data type integer and then uh, a access specifier called as public wherein I introduce a constructor A. Now if you observe uh, the name of a constructor is exactly same as that of a class name. So, the, the first property is definitely satisfied here. A is the name of the class at the same time, A is the name of the constructor too. Every constructor will opens with a opening brass and closes with a closing brasses and uh, in the same way a class need to be closed. So, you can find the closing and uh, you can find the closing of a class A. Then there is a, uh, there is one more uh, a future uh, that can, that need to be learned uh, by a programmer. If what need to be done if a constructor define if a constructor is defined outside the class if it is defined inside the class you don't have any problem but if it is defined outside the class uh, the, you need to introduce a special type of operator that can be observed from this uh, slide there is a class uh, whose name is a and i have uh, again included a member variable num which is of the data type, data type uh, integer now I have used a constructor A whose name is same as that of a class name. Now the class has been closed. Now I try to define a, a constructor here after, after completing the class. This is called as defining a constructor outside the class. Here I have used a special operator called as scope access operator, scope access operator which need to be used whenever a, a function or a constructor. The same operator can be used. If a function or a constructor uh, need to be defined outside the class, C++ uses a new uh, and extra operator called as a scope access operator uh, which may not be there with uh, C. Uh, we hear uh, one interesting future that we need to understand is C++ is a rich set of operators when compared to C. Uh, we are uh, C++ is an advanced programming language when compared to C. So, in, the, in, the, in that case, C++ need to possess some extra features which are not there with uh, C. Uh, this, is a, this is a clear example of introducing a new operator called as scope access operator which is definitely used for defining a constructor or a member function outside the class. Then uh, this, uh, the previous slides clearly explains us about how uh, we can define a constructor inside the class or outside the class, what kind of uh, structure it need to follow. Then uh, in the latter part, uh, the constructor may be categorized into many different uh, uh, sectors or else categories. They may be default constructor, the second one is uh, parameterized constructor, the last one is copy constructor. Here uh, in computer uh, science, uh, we achieve one advantage. By looking at uh, the title itself, a uh, user or else a programmer or else a student can directly understand uh, the concept. So, here there are three types, one of them is uh, default constructor, parameterized constructor as well as copy constructor. Now, let me explain you 
uh, one by one uh, in detail. Uh, the first one is default constructor. If a constructor do not accept any parameter, definitely it is called as a default constructor. In case of functions too, in uh, CRL C++, a function may be without arguments or without parameters. There they may be called as a function without arguments. In case of constructor, if a constructor is without any parameters or arguments, definitely it is referred as a default constructor. If no and uh, there is a specialized, there is a specialization again uh, comes with C++ here or else C++ compiler. One, one interesting uh, point I would like to quote here is uh, the C++ compiler is uh, more superior when compared to C. That is the reason uh, C++ compiler understands the things in a better way when, uh, when we compare with uh, the previous language called as C. So, here is one such example uh, that can be coded. If no such constructor, I mean if no default constructor is defined, then uh, automatically the compi compiler supplies a default constructor. So, a student need to understand that if we pass a constructor without arguments, it can be definitely called as a default constructor. In case, if you do not define a constructor, so definitely compiler automatically supplies a default constructor. So, this is a peculiarity that is there with C++ compiler. At the when the language was introduced, there are certain, uh, there may be certain information already defined uh, by the language and all such information uh, will be given to compiler wherever required, uh, the compiler definitely comes into the picture to supply all such information uh, to the programmer uh, in designing the programs or in designing, in designing a solution to various number of problems. So, if a constructor is not defined in a class, compiler uh, naturally comes into the picture and uh, supplies default constructor. So, here default constructor need to be understood in two ways. If, if you use a constructor without mentioning any parameters, definitely it can be observed through a program called as default constructor. But uh, if a constructor is not at all defined, then there is a chance for the compiler to supply the default constructor. Here is a syntax uh, which shows how a default constructor may be uh, defined. There is a I here I have used a class, each and every class generally contains a class name and you can see an access specifier public and there is a class name here. This is called as, now this is called as default constructor. As I told you, constructor will have the same name as that of a class name. Now, when you observe this default constructor, there is no parameter which I have passed. Hence, it is called as default constructor. Each and every C or C++ program contains one main function which, which uh, uh, reveals the compiler about uh, the starting point of the program and uh, here in the, in the syntax also there is a uh, function called as main then followed by the declaration of object. Uh, at, at that stage the default constructor is invoked. Now, this can be understood uh, uh, through one example. There is a class called as a cube and uh, there is one uh, member member variable side whose data type is integer. In uh, C language, uh, the central role is given to a concept called as variable. Whenever uh, you declare a variable, uh, some kind of memory space will be allocated to that depending upon its data type. If it is integer, it occupies some space. If it is a float, uh, it occupies some other space and if it is character, it occupies some other space. Same is the concept uh, uh, which will be borrowed to C++ also. Whenever uh, you use a variable in a class, its size will be decided according to its data type. So, as I have mentioned side as a member variable participating in a class cube uh, with its uh, data type called as integer, it occupies uh, 2 bytes of memory, uh, which is which may be same with uh, C language also, which may be same with uh, C language also. Then uh, I have used a constructor cube whose name is same as that of a class name. So, now if you observe this, this can this constructor can be called as a default constructor you know and by looking at its uh, signature or a style, uh, one can easily understand. We I, I have not at all passed any parameter or argument into this. Hence, it may be called as default constructor. A constructor, if it do not accept any parameters, definitely 
called as a default constructor. Then uh, I have passed uh, the value to a member variable side uh, with uh, 10. 10 is being assigned to side whose data type is integer and uh, I have closed uh, this constructor. Then uh, the class is also closed here. Now every C++ as I told you every C++ uh, uh, program uh, begins with a main function. Here I have used object uh, C. Now here uh, some people uh, may ask you a question. What is the exact size of an object C here? The size of an object always remember uh, the size of an object of any class uh, can be measured by looking at uh, the number of member variables participating in a class. Now as far as uh, this class is concerned uh, uh, there is one member variables which is participating called as side whose uh, size may be 2 bytes. Hence uh, the size of the object is also decided as 2 bytes because its size is nothing the any object size is nothing but sum of the individual sizes of the member variables participating in the class. As we have only one member variable whose data type is integer if it as it is occupies 2 bytes the size of C is also 2 bytes. So, C is an object uh, uh, which is of the data type called as a class cube. Uh, now C then uh, I, I have used a uh, one more uh, output format of uh, C++ called as C out uh, which is used to display the value of uh, uh, side of a constructor C. So, this, this program uh, exactly speaks with how a constructor may be used without actually passing the parameters. It looks simple a programmer or else a student need not worry how to use a constructor without uh, arguments. So, this is a simple program which exactly speaks about uh, what is the structure of default constructor. Then uh, once you execute uh, the previous program by using your uh, C++ then you will get the output as 10 as I have passed uh, the value of S as 10 then the value of side is 10. This is the way uh, we receive the output of uh, uh, C++. The, the, this is one sample uh, example talks about uh, uh, C++ uh, constructor may be called as default uh, constructor. Then uh, the important uh, part of uh, constructor is parameterized constructor. Most of the programmers uh, uh, prefers to use parameterized constructor because uh, we try to provide a solution to many number of problems um, by using only parameterized constructor. Default constructor may not be used in all situations because uh, problem problems and uh, definitely contain certain values which are need to be passed in the form of uh, parameters. Therefore, uh, majority of the situations programmer try to use parameterized constructor and I can uh, define uh, this parameterized constructor from the point of uh, uh, default constructor itself. There is a clear distinction between default constructor and parameterized constructor. The name itself uh, uh, suggests as a point here a constructor with parameters hence it is called as parameterized constructor. When you go back to default constructor a constructor without parameters hence it is called as default. Now here uh, a constructor that receives parameters or arguments is called as uh, parameterized constructor. It takes the uh, parameters. Uh, when we create a uh, parameterized constructors we have to pass parameter values at the time of creating the objects of that class. So, there is a chance for a programmer to create the objects at that time we pass the values. This is called as the dynamism. This is called as dynamic nature of C++. So, when we create the parameterized constructor we have a chance to pass parameter values at the time of uh, creating objects of that uh, class. This, this is an important uh, point the students need to observe. This, 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 this is a situation which uh, uh, exploits the dynamic nature of uh, C++. So, we have a chance to uh, pass the values to parameters at the time of uh, creating the objects itself. Then um, there is an example uh, which quotes uh, style and uh, structure of uh, parameterized constructor. Again uh, I am sticking to the same example uh, of a cube. I take a class with the name cube. I use a access specifier public in which I pass uh, uh, member variable I mean uh, 
I allow a member variable called as site to participate whose uh, data type is uh, integer. Then uh, as I told you the constructor need to pass, uh, constructor need to be declared under public section. Here I am declaring uh, a constructor uh, same name as that of a class name called as Q and here there is a difference uh, compared to default constructor here. Particularly in this uh, example, I am passing a parameter called as yes whose data type is integer. So, this is a way a programmer can pass the value, pass the parameters into a constructor. Now, exactly at this situation, if you want to compare uh, this future with function, function in C as well as in C++ follows the same. Here I have, uh, I have uh, passed a parameter whose name is yes and its data type is integer to a constructor cube. Then uh, I have opened uh, the body of a constructor and assigned the value of yes to a member variable participating in the class. Now, you can observe the things. Here it is a constructor which can access the member variables, uh, member variable of, member variable of a class called as side. So, as it is declared under public label, there is no uh, problem for a constructor to access uh, those uh, member variables. But definitely uh, here at this situation, we need to understand a point that constructor is always declared under public. There is no problem for the constructor to access the member variables, now they are declared under public or uh, private, as constructor is declared under public. Initially, I have quoted this rule, constructor need to be declared only under the public section, hence there is no problem uh, for the constructor to access uh, the member variables of the same class. So, so I have uh, assigned the value of yes, uh, assigned the parameter yes uh, to a member variable side, then uh, I have closed uh, uh, the code of uh, constructor, then the class is also closed. As we understand uh, every program, C++ program begins with a main function. Here, uh, just now uh, previously I have uh, mentioned the importance of main. Main is used to indicate the starting point of the program to the compiler, but uh, we need to understand the peculiarity of the compiler here. Main is a function which do not return anything, you know, which do not return anything. It is only meant for uh, uh, informing the compiler about uh, the starting point of the program. But uh, we you know we understand that uh, C++ compiler always expects a return type whenever uh, you, you use a function. In that case, I am using uh, void which do not return, which do not return anything. So, this clearly indicates the compiler. Main is a function which is not going to return anything, that is the reason uh, we are using void. So, uh, there is a default uh, return type uh, which will be understood by compiler is nothing but integer. Always compile C++ compiler likes to have uh, uh, integer whenever you use a function, but uh, main is a function which do not return anything. I am uh, uh, using a special uh, data type called as void which may not be there with C again. There are some extra data types uh, which are introduced by C++, one of that uh, extra data type is void which means it do not return anything. Whenever you want to, whenever uh, if you want to say something is not written anything, there you can place a, a keyword called as void. Every main function is opened with uh, uh, opening braces. Now, here uh, I am using um, three objects, one of them is C1, other one is C2, the last one is C3, C1, C2, C3 and uh, the size of uh, C1 is uh, two bytes because there is only one member variable participating in a class whose data type is integer. Uh, I told you, as I told you, uh, the size of any object is nothing but sum of the individual sizes of the member variables participating in the class. I used uh, C1 as an object, I used C2, C3, then uh, I passed the values here. As I told you, the values of the parameters which can be passed at the time of uh, creating the objects. Now, this is the stage where you can understand that point. This is a stage where you can uh, understand that point. 10 is a value, here I have uh, passed. 20 is a value, I have passed here. 30 is a value, I have uh, passed here. So, 10, 20, 30 are the values which, which may be passed. This, this example clearly shows you how you can pass the parameters into the constructor. Uh, this looks very simple uh, uh, when you uh, look at the output of this program. And uh, C1 uh, is holds with a value 10. C2 holds with a value 20, 
C3 holds the value 30. So, now default constructor parameter parameterized constructor can be understood very easily default constructor do not have any arguments parameterized constructors will have the argument. The next thing is next thing is copy constructor this is very special. So, sometimes the student may get into confusion mode to understand what is the nature of this copy constructor, but uh, as I told you just uh, from the name itself one can easily understand it is nothing but copy constructor what it copies actually it is generally called as a constructor, but there is a word called as copy what does it mean whether it copies something or else uh, it is only used for uh, copying purpose. Now, when you look at uh, the definition of this copy constructor this is a special type of constructor which takes object as a parameter which takes object as an argument or parameter. So, this is a special distinction so, you can try to understand now this is a special type of constructor which takes an object as argument and copies the data members into another object. Now, there is a linkage the copying concept is done between two objects the, the value the data of one, one data of the data from one object to other object can be copied by using this copy constructor. So, here uh, uh, there are two this the two points from which the definition of copy constructor can be divided one is it takes the argument as an object and it copies the data members from one object to one object to other object. So, the, these are the two points uh, the student need to understand one is it is a special type because it takes object as an argument the second purpose is it copies the data members into another object. So, the next point is the initialization of an object through another object is called copy constructor. So, you, th so you see uh, the uh, nature of uh, this concept the initialization of one object is done through another object uh, before uh, it is used to be done with a constructor now here the initialization of one object will be done through another object. So, this is a specialized uh, scenario how one object can initialize another object and let me explain you let me explain you through one example this is a syntax uh, which exactly speaks about a copy constructor and there is a uh, when you observe the uh, syntax of this copy constructor class name followed by class name and object name. Now, this is a stage this is a stage where I can explain you that the object is passed as an argument object is passed as an object object is passed as an argument then uh, the immediate step is copies the data members with another object then uh, this uh, program talks about a copy constructor scenario and I have taken two member variables which are of the data type integer and character then I have used one parameterized constructor uh, then uh, there comes copy constructor person the same name as that of a class name and here I have used p which is nothing but uh, name of the uh, which is nothing but the name of the object passed as a parameter then uh, then the immediate step is copying of data members from one object to another object. So, this program uh, talks about I have used a function called as string copy which exactly copies uh, exactly copies uh, the data members from one object to other object and uh, there is a function called as void display which displays uh, the name and age of a person and uh, as I told you every C++ program starts with a main function. Now, you can see there is a name called as Kamal and whose age is 52 and there are uh, two objects P1 and P2 and P2 P1 is again passed P1 is again uh, passed to P2 P1 P2 uh, exchanges copy of data from uh, one to each other then uh, P1 is used with display P2 is also used with display function and uh, here uh, Kamal and 52 are there with both P1 and P2 Kamal and 52 are copied to another object thereby the other object also holds Kamal and uh, 52 this uh, this is talks about copy constructor then uh, the one more interesting feature of overload uh, constructor is overloading of constructor functions also takes the same concept constructor can also takes the same uh, as I told you in a class you can use more than one constructor and if a constructor takes the same name and if it is used for different purposes we call it as a uh, overloading of constructor function concept also exactly speaks the same, but there are certain rules which are need to be followed uh, whenever we try to overload the constructor to overload a constructor uh, number uh, it should be different either in number of arguments or in type of arguments same conditions are also applied with function same will be followed for a 
followed for uh, constructor too. There must be a difference either in number of arguments or in uh, type of uh, arguments. This program uh, speaks about uh, the overloading of uh, constructor concept. Uh, here I have used uh, three constructors. One is a default constructor rectangle, other one is a rectangle to which I have passed one argument and there is one more uh, uh, constructor called as rectangle to which I have passed uh, two arguments and there is now rectangle RECT is a constructor uh, to which I have passed uh, integer and RECT is the other constructor to which I have passed two arguments. So, this is where uh, you can find the distinction. Uh, two constructors with the same name and uh, they are different uh, in types of uh, uh, in case of uh, type of parameters or else number of parameters. As the condition conditions are satisfied, uh, you can perform this operation overloading of constructor. In the same name used for a different uh, uh, purposes. One is with uh, calculation of integer, other one is with uh, uh, calculation of more number of uh, uh, member variables. So, you can see you can clearly find out the distinction in this program and uh, there is a function called as void display area, void display area and uh, through which you can uh, now we can see uh, the differences between um, different constructors which are used for different purposes. R1, R2, R3 are the different uh, objects to which I have passed the values phi and uh, 4 comma phi which are exactly used for uh, calculating uh, the areas. R1 is, uh, is with default, R2 is with one parameter, R3 is with uh, two parameters. So, same name has been used for uh, different purposes, they hold the distinction uh, in, in case of uh, in terms of difference of number of parameters. When you look at uh, when you want to look at the output, the first one area is 0, the second one area is 25, the last one area is 20. So, this is a clear example uh, uh, which uh, talks about uh, constructor overloading. Uh, uh, constructor with the same name performing uh, different actions uh, may be done uh, by holding a conditions that uh, either they need to be deferred in terms of uh, type of the parameters or else number of parameters. Then uh, we move on to one um, interesting uh, feature of a constructor, there is a clear uh, distinction between C and C++. C++ always uh, referred as a best memory, uh, best memory uh, utilizer when compared to C. Here it is, uh, here it is a concept uh, uh, which uh, uh, talks about uh, dynamism of the constructor, uh, uh, which, which uh, explains us how best uh, the C++ uh, uses the memory space. Constructors can be used to allocate the memory to data members of its class dynamically uh, with the help of a new keyword. Here is the case where uh, again uh, the importance of C++ comes into the picture. As I told you, C++ is a rich set of operators. There is one keyword called as new which does uh, uh, some extraordinary work which may not be there with C. The allocation and deallocation of the memory with constructor may be done with uh, two keywords, one is new, other one is uh, delete. These are the two keywords which talks about uh, the dynamism may be applied for the constructors. Constructors are enjoying the popularity because uh, once its usage is finished, finished, there may be a chance to destruct it also, destruct it also. That, that may be explained uh, uh, with uh, keywords new as well as uh, uh, delete and uh, this is a program. Uh, which talks about the dynamism of the constructor, where I have uh, used uh, uh, a keyword new and uh, which is uh, meant for allocating the memory. Once uh, its usage is uh, finished, uh, I take up uh, another uh, uh, keyword called as delete, which may be used with a destructor. I, I, I am using a concept of destructor here. There is a comparison between the construction and destructor. In general way also, these two travel in uh, opposite direction, you know. Constructor is meant for constructing something, destructor is meant for destroying something. Here, uh, when you apply the same concept, constructor always constructs, destructor always destroys if it, if it feels that uh, construction is of uh, no use, constructor is of uh, no use. So, constructor and destructor uh, works in um, opposite direction, you know. So, that is the reason uh, I have uh, taken a chance to explain you. Uh, by introducing the destructor also by taking two uh, keywords, one of them is new, other one is delete. So, this is where uh, if the constructor is of no use, if the programmer feels 
the defined constructor is of no use, then they can go with uh, a destructor. Thereby, uh, the memory which was used will be freed up and can be used for different purposes. Hence, C++ called to be an effective memory utilizer uh, which uh, may not be applied with C. There are, there are some clear distinctions with C++ if it is compared with C. One such distinction is constructor as well as a destructor. Then uh, this program continues with main function and here I have used a, a function called as display with uh, object. Then uh, this is uh, where uh, you can uh, observe the output output of uh, this uh, dynamic uh, nature of a constructor. So, here is a point uh, uh, which uh, talks about uh, the memory management aspect uh, with uh, constructors too. So, right from this session, uh, I have uh, defined uh, uh, you uh, the definition of a constructor, what is its purpose, syntax of the constructor and uh, what are all the different types that are there with constructor and in that also I have mentioned you that uh, every programmer generally prefers to use parameterized constructor. Then we interestingly we have understood uh, what is the nature of uh, copy constructor. Then uh, we, we have gone for uh, the memory management scheme uh, utilized with uh, constructor by introducing uh, keywords called as new and delete in, uh, uh, which uh, uh, provides an opportunity for the programmer to utilize the space once the utilization is finished and they can uh, uh, free up they can go uh, they can free up with uh, a keyword called as uh, a delete so in this way constructor is a beautiful future constructor is a beautiful future uh, uh, which uh, can be used for uh, different purposes but uh, at the end uh, briefly if i want to mention you constructor is a special member function constructor need to be declared under public section constructor do not return anything do not enjoy uh, do not enjoy any return type or else uh, it takes the same name as that of a, a class name so all these slides uh, clearly explain you the importance of the constructor as well as the uh, destructor uh, dist uh, in a brief manner uh, i have explained you about the destructor but uh, destructor uh, can also be used in most of the situation if and only if the programmer uh, want to explain if, if, if and only if uh, uh, the programmer takes a chance to explain you about uh, the memory management with the help of uh, new and uh, uh, delete uh, the new and delete uh, are need to be attached with uh, only objects then uh, so to prepare all these uh, slides uh, uh, for this session i uh, have uh, referred uh, many references from different areas. One of the references mastering uh, CPP by K. R. Ben Gopal and thanks to uh, object oriented programming with C++ by Saurav Sahe who have uh, prepared uh, the wonderful uh, content uh, for explaining uh, constructors too. And uh, even I take this chance to thank uh, the SlideShare uh, website who has provided us many number of images uh, because I have taken some of the contents from SlideShare too. Uh, to make uh, the students to understand in a easy possible way. Uh, then I have used a website called as uh, uh, w3schools.com uh, which also taken a chance to explain the constructor concept uh, in a beautiful way. But most of the times uh, object orientation concept uh, need to be understood in a easy manner uh, when uh, compared to other and uh, at last uh, I, I conclude uh, by saying a few points about C++. C++ stands in between C and Java. So, C is a basic programming language. Hence, C is called as a middle level when we go for Java. C++ concepts borrows all and all the concepts of C and exactly uses them. And you need to learn C++ to go ahead to learn another advanced language called as Java most and most of the most and majority of the concepts of C++ again uh, may be used with Java. So, there is a club path for a student to familiarize with uh, programming concepts right from C to C++ and Java. Thank you one and all.